Hey folks, and welcome to the Truck King YouTube channel. Well, you already know that people love their recreational travel trailers, but with the new all-electric future, are these vehicles really well suited to pulling those kind of trailers? That's exactly why we grabbed a Ford F-150 Lightning. We're gonna tow that trailer for over 100 kilometers today and find out. A big thank you goes to Gimme Shelter RV in Mono, Ontario for use of the unit in this video. If you're looking for a travel trailer, give them a call. Right off the top, let me hit you with a bunch of numbers. So first of all, the tow rating. Our truck here today is a Lariat with the extended range battery and the max tow package, which means this truck is ready to pull up to 10,000 pounds. Now, when you go for that max towing package, you're not actually getting a whole bunch of suspension or electronics. What you're getting is upgraded cooling, upgraded cooling for both the motors and the batteries. So you can get all of the other towing goodies, things like an integrated trailer brake controller without the tow package, but if you're gonna tow heavy like we're doing today, you're gonna want that upgraded cooling. Now, the other thing I wanna mention here is the GVWR, the gross vehicle weight rating, because on this truck, it's 8,400 pounds. That high GVWR means high payload rating. On this truck here today, 1,500 pounds, just a little bit over of payload. Let's look at what we're pulling today. This is the Catalina Legacy Edition 303 QBC K. Hey, now the things that you need to know for this towing test, it is 35 feet long and this trailer has a GVWR of 9,500 pounds. So if this thing was fully loaded with gear and with tanks full, you can get it up to 9,500. We're pulling it today totally empty and it has an unloaded vehicle weight of about 7,200 pounds. So that's a little bit closer to what we're doing today. Now we have pulled with the Lightning before, actually we've pulled 9,000 pounds with the Lightning before but that was actually a low boy trailer with the weight nice and down low in it so it just wasn't the same kind of test as pulling something like a 35 foot long travel trailer and I'm not sure how much you can notice from the trees around me but it's a windy day today we're getting some good wind gusts 20 30 kilometers an hour easily so we're now going to set out I mentioned we're going to do 100 kilometers that's about 60 miles we're going to go hit a charger so we'll see what the charging situation is like and then along the way we'll just tell you how this thing pulls and what it's going to be like to live with the travel trailer and an electric truck so let's dive into all that right now all right backing into our trailer we can see the cameras here so that's the important one there you get the rear view and then when we get close enough it's a little plus so Ooh. down here yeah you can look at specific corners of your truck so just the front corner in this case i guess you probably want the rear Look, you can just kind of see the trailer down there. Yeah, cool. Okay. And then when that one's zoomed in, you can't zoom in the top one, but then as you get close here, you zoom that one in. And you got the hitch guideline, which is nice. And boom. And I like that auto parking brake ready. When you hit the zoom button, it knows you're backing into a trailer. So when you go into park, the parking brake comes on. Makes sense. Hey everybody, it's Howard at Truck King. Listen, about two years ago, I was gifted a set of these giddy up straps and they've been in my truck ever since, helping my wife, my grandkids, even my mom get in and out. Well, just recently, we came into a supply of these and we now wanna sell them to you. So all you gotta do is reach out to us at hey at truckking.ca. Steve will throw that up here. Tell us where you are, what kind of truck you have, how many units you want. We'll get back to you with the price, including postage. Listen, we believe in this product and we believe you're gonna like it too. Now let's talk about how this Lightning is actually pulling. And uh, dad towed it all the way out to the charge station and I'm towing it back. So we both got a good feel for it here today. Well, plus I'm tired of doing all the heavy lifting. So it's <laughs> oh, I time see. for him to get, get some work done. I see how it is. Um, so yeah, I mean, on first blush, it feels okay. That's sort of the general consensus. Um, 
it's a big trailer, 35 feet long, and it's been a pretty windy day today. So you absolutely feel it back there. And uh, we will, I, I think it's a good thing to get this out of the way off the top. A little bit of do as we say, not as we do. With a trailer like this, you want an equalizing hitch absolutely every time. We don't have an equalizing hitch with us today, mostly because it's just a big uh, time suck for us to have to set it up. But the other truth is that I think it's actually almost a better test for the truck without the equalizing hitch, because the fact that it's doing okay without the EQ hitch tells me that once you added one, it's gonna feel that much better. So anyways, just I wanted to get that out of the way. Yes, no equalizing hitch here today. Yeah, so don't yell at us. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know, we're, we're right around 7,200 pounds with this trailer as it is, 800 pounds of tongue weight, and yeah, dynamically it's okay. And I think that the one thing that you'll never complain about is the power. Power is ridiculous. It accelerates like no vehicle has any business accelerating like this with a trailer that big on the back and the power is just incredible, so. That's very true and, and you know, over 30 years of, of doing RV reviews, particularly on the bigger units, one of the things that guys were always so, so I, I'm going to say embarrassed about was being out in the mountains and having to go up these grades with their four ways on because um, yeah the the truck was uh, they couldn't accelerate yeah that is never ever going to be the case with an electric vehicle it's this thing jumps like like a scared rabbit absolutely and then add on to the fact that at altitude you lose no power either so if you are up in the mountains at 10,000 feet doesn't matter you get the exact same power delivery so that's another big uh, plus for electric. Absolutely. So the other advantage is actually the weight of the vehicle. Um, we get the battery pack, which is sandwiched between the frame rails, so it's down low. It's heavy, and that lends itself to this planted feeling. Now I mentioned it's a windy day. I can feel the trailer swaying back there, but I would say that more so than on a, a, a gas-powered F-150, the truck isn't really being affected that much because it is so heavy and planted. And that was one of the things that I, I'll never forget when they went to the full aluminum body and they said, our tow ratings are way higher now. And I said, great, you know, I, I understand the numbers work that way, but in the real world, you don't want to take all the weight out of your tow vehicle and add it to your trailer. That just, that's not good physics. So I like the way this feels because the truck is so heavy and therefore, you know, really planted compared to the trailer behind us. Well, in addition, we've said this before, but I mean, I mean, the weight split is, is almost dead 50-50 front axle to rear axle, which anybody who's ever driven a gas powered truck knows that that's not the case, where the back end is always light, the back end is always skittish. Um, you, you, you just learn to drive it knowing that in situations it's gonna break loose on you. Now it's the same when it comes to towing with the back end loose, the trailer is going to move that back end a lot more than what's happening right now. Yeah, yeah, that's totally fair. So yeah, as, as a tow vehicle goes, and we've said this in our last reviews, but it's good. The power's there, the dynamics are there. It didn't squat all that much, like the actual attitude of the truck. It doesn't yeah. feel like the nose is up high in the air. Yeah, I thought it might, but it didn't. But that's sort of how my brain thinks about the Lightning, is yeah, it's not just like every F-150, it's a heavy half ton. Yeah, well, the thing being, of course, is that they've, they've built the Lightning into a standard F-150. You know, whereas some of the other guys out there right now, like the Rev, for instance, with Ram, sure. you know, it's clean sheet design. Yes. They simply took this truck and they said, we've got enough space, we'll, we'll make this into the Lightning, which is also a marketing exercise because when you get into this truck, it's like every F-150 you've ever driven. Sure. So you don't feel like you're in a spaceship. You don't yeah. need to be Captain Kirk to figure out this truck. Yeah. And you know what, that's a good thing to talk about is the strategy because I think Ford nailed the strategy because they were first. They beat everyone to market. While Ram and Chevy were both designing brand new clean sheet designs, Ford said put a battery in the existing frame and get it on the road now. So Ford has enjoyed years of sales that the other brands will never be able to get back. And Ford is working on their own clean sheet design. They've already announced that 2025, we're gonna get an electric truck brand new from Ford that has its own unique chassis. So they know that there's advantages to the clean sheet design. But like I said, I think Ford nailed it when it comes to strategy on EVs because they were first to market and then eventually they'll have their clean sheet truck, which you know is gonna compete. So yeah, strategy wise, I think they, they nailed it. No, absolutely. And, and that'll be interesting to see because, you know, I realize that 
building this lightning, um, you've, you've now got years of data, of customer feedback, off which to go and build your new truck. Whereas the other guys simply all sat around in a boardroom and said, what do we think we should do? Without point. really talking to the guys who use these every day. It's a good point. And, and electric trucks are not electric cars. Maybe that sounds simple, but a truck gets used in so many different usage cases that it has to be viewed very differently. Um, and you're right that without real world application, sometimes you just don't think of some scenarios. You know? Well, hence the reason, you know, because I'm still all pumped up here that the charging stations are not built around vehicles at tow. There's not a, a charging station I've seen yet that said, oh, we need to think about guys who pull in here who've got trailers on and want to charge. Yeah. None of them. So we're about halfway through our loop and we've pulled into a large mall just off the highway. And as you can see, we've got a bank of flow chargers here. And the first thing I gotta tell you is this is Thursday, right around lunchtime. So there are people here, but the parking lot is far from full. Now, that is strictly luck of the draw. Cause I mean, take a look at the way that I am parked. I am taking up something in the neighborhood of about seven or eight uh, parking spots. In addition to which, none of the chargers are in use except for this one fellow that just showed up now. Still, I had to come in at that charger from the wrong direction so that I didn't block any of the other chargers. Luckily, it's got a long cord. So, it's better to be lucky than good because I could have showed up here and this parking lot could have been full, in which case we'd have been stuck dropping the trailer back in the back someplace and then having to come up to the charger. Now, that's obvious. All right, so let's talk about what's not obvious. Let's talk about the fact that somebody, a designer someplace, said this is the right place to put these chargers. On an outside lane, close to the building, in parking spots which will normally fill up quickly because they're close to the entrance. Why have we not taken this bank of chargers and put them at the extreme back of the parking lot which won't fill up constantly and will allow more space for guys like me who are towing a trailer? And let me tell you why, because the guy who designed this never even considered that anybody would be towing a trailer and have to come in and charge. In addition to which, he was obviously from California because look at what we have here. Four chargers under God's sky without a roof. Okay, this is Canada, people, where we have crap weather 10 months of the year. We need roofs. That's why every gas station in Ontario has a huge canopy over it so that when I'm out here hooking up, I'm not getting snowed on, sleeted on, iced on, or rained on. But again, Nothing. Who was thinking about this? Brings me all the way back. Hate to say I keep harping on this, but these are such early days. There have been so many mistakes made as the charging system has been put together, its location, the way it's designed, the access, that we need to keep working on it. Don't think that what you see here is the way it's going to remain, because otherwise people just won't do this. They just won't. It's too inconvenient, it's too troublesome. So at the moment, thankfully, we pulled in, we got space, we didn't have to unhook. We're gonna continue on our way so we can tell you how well the truck did towing this trailer. But honestly, this is the most stressful part of any towing experience if you have an electric vehicle. All right, so the readout, on this flow charger is telling us that we're at 76% battery on the truck so it can read what's going on with the truck. Okay, and frankly that's enough because I'm bored stupid here. So we're gonna hit the big stop button and it should tell us how much money we just spent. Cost, calculating, charge ended, stop by user, Okay, we spent $12, come on back, <laughs> 83 cents if I remember correctly, yeah. and it took us 29 minutes. In addition to which, we should point out that when you, when you stop to do the math, 
if if we were to charge this same amount at home, it would probably be about two bucks. Yeah. Um, so you're paying for the fact that this thing is sitting here. It supposedly charges faster than what you would do at home because at home, of course, you're you're plugged in overnight. Uh, but there's a significant differential between charging at home and charging on the road. So as you saw from our experience at the charger. Uh, living with an electric truck and a travel trailer, it takes some getting used to and, and there's still some hopefulness on our part that the people who are designing these things will start thinking of a combination like this when they're doing those designs. And Dad, the same has to be said for RV parks. This is going to be a massive change for RV parks that have been established for many, many, many years. Um, it is going to be people pulling in with their truck and being like, well, I unhooked my trailer. Now I want to plug my truck in. Absolutely. How do I get charged? Is it based on what I use? Is it a flat rate? Et cetera, et cetera. So we're actually going to reach out to some RV parks and get some answers. And uh, we might as well put them in the video. So here's what we found. So we contacted about five local RV parks here in Ontario and they all basically told us the same thing. This hasn't been an issue yet because there hasn't been enough electric vehicles in the park. So right now you can go ahead and plug your EV in and you won't be charged separately. Now we know that at some of the long term parks you actually get a power meter that will charge you based on your power usage. So if you're staying somewhere for a month, well then yeah, you'll pay for the charging that you do. Now the other interesting one is KOA. This is probably the largest group of campgrounds in all of North America. Now KOA has announced they are installing chargers at all of their campgrounds, but right now they say that you're not allowed to plug in to the traditional 30 to 50 amp campground pedestals. According to KOA, this could permanently damage your vehicle or it could damage the campground's electrical system. So it sounds like maybe some of the KOA campgrounds have had some problems, especially considering most of this electrical infrastructure is decades old in some cases. It certainly was not set up with electric vehicle charging in mind. So if you go to a KOA right now, you want to find one with a charger, otherwise they won't let you plug in your electric vehicle. And I do wonder if this policy won't eventually spread to more campgrounds as they encounter more EVs. The F-150 Lightning here has an intelligent range calculator. So when you put a trailer on, you're able to go in and input the height of the trailer, the width of the trailer, the approximate weight of the trailer, and then the truck will adjust its range based on those numbers. It will also adjust the range based on a couple of miles of driving down the road because it will see what the usage is and then adjust the range accordingly. That is good. You want to make sure that once you get your trailer on, the range number you're getting out of the dash is still actually accurate and the other reason I'm telling you this is because we're just about to unhook the trailer so we have 164 kilometers of rain showing we're gonna go unhook the trailer we'll drive down the road for a minute and we'll see how much the range adjusts in real time and now you can see we've disconnected the trailer. I literally just drove around the block to give the truck a second to uh, do its thing. And the range has jumped up. Yes, brake coach, I know. 262 kilometers of range now that the trailer's been disconnected. So yes, that real-time range calculator is definitely working. And what I really like is you can save multiple trailers. And if you owned a bunch of trailers, after they're saved, all you have to do is say, hey, I'm towing my travel trailer today. And that range calculation will happen automatically because the truck will know how much range each one of those trailers eats into. And now folks, it is time to talk about range. So we went back to the RV dealership, we dropped the trailer, and then we drove to my house with no trailer on the back so we could get a good sense for what the truck would get without a trailer on. So with the trailer on the back, over 90 kilometers, we did 55 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Without the trailer on, we did 22 kilowatt hours per 100. So the consumption doubled, almost exactly doubled once we put the trailer on. Um, and there's a couple ways to look at this. I do, I think the first thing I do want to point out is that, and I think you're on in my camp here, Dad, most gas powered vehicles 
would also double their consumption with a trailer that yeah, size. Yeah, no, right? absolutely. You'd, you'd go from 10 liters to 20 liters easy. So it's not crazy how much the consumption uh, went <clears throat> up. What is frustrating is to know that I cut my overall range from somewhere over 400 kilometers down to just 200 kilometers. So yeah, every 200, I now have to stop and charge. And as you guys saw, stopping and charging isn't always a, a simple task. So that's where the range thing really comes into focus for me. It's not that these things are incredibly inefficient. It's just that because you've lost the range, you've just made charging that much more frustrating. Right? Well, it, it, again, and and it's 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 the planning process you know we're, we're just not used to this um, you're gonna tow a trailer you know you're gonna burn a lot more gas or diesel but it's not a big deal because there's a station every 10 friggin minutes or yeah. at the most um, now you got to get on your phone and with a map you better start figuring out where every charge point is and can you get from here to here to here to here so that exercise, I don't know. A lot of people, they think that's fun. I don't. Well, folks, we're coming to the end of this one, and we're ending our day with this F-150 Lightning. Now, I do think if you own a travel trailer and you were to buy this truck, there's a number of advantages. You're gonna get a great towing experience. That onboard power would also be excellent in the trailer park. So as a vehicle and as a camping companion, I think the F-150 Lightning is excellent. But once you start towing, the charge experience gets that much more frustrating. So make sure you're ready to live with that if you wanna own one of these trucks. So like I said, that's it for this one. Now please go below, let us know what you think of this lightning. As always, while you're down there, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, hit join to become a member of Truck King, and then come right back here to the channel to see what we're testing next.